Welcome back to Lonely Man BG's and this video series on how to play War of the Ring. This is the third video in a series of four on armies and battles. In this video, we're going to look at battles. The free peoples and shadow armies will clash throughout the lands of Middle Earth, so it's important to know how they work. Attacking with armies. First of all, only armies who belong to a nation that is at war may initiate a battle. An army may attack an enemy army during the action resolution phase. They may do this by using the character or army action die result, or by playing an event card. If using the character action die result, the army must contain at least one leader or character. Using the action dice, a player may do one of the following. 1. Attack an enemy army in an adjacent region. Or 2. Initiate a siege or sortie against an enemy army in the same region. The second option will be gone over in the next video. One thing to remember is that an army action die result can only activate a single army for the purpose of attacking. Also, when attacking, the units initiating the battle do not move into the region they are attacking. Only if the battle is won may the player move the attacking units into that region. When attacking, the player may choose to split the army into two. The first is the attacking army, the second is the rear guard, which does not take part in the battle. Each of the new armies must contain at least one army unit, but leaders, companions, and minions may be distributed as the player sees fit. If using the character action die, the attacking army must have at least one leader or character. The rear guard does not affect and cannot be affected by the battle in any way. It remains even if the attacking army moves into the contested region. If a player wishes to attack using an army, but there are units within an army which are not at war, the player will find it necessary to split the army, leaving them in the rear guard. Note, when attacked, all defending units are always considered part of the battle. Now we'll look at combat strength and leadership. The combat strength of an army is equal to the total number of army units, both regular and elite. The combat strength determines how many dice are rolled during the combat roll. A maximum of 5 dice may be rolled. For example, this army of 6 units and 2 leaders has a combat strength of 6, but only 5 dice will be rolled. The leadership of an army is equal to the number of leaders slash Nazgul plus the leadership ratings of other characters in the army. This value is shown in each character card. Leadership determines how many dice may be used in a leader reroll, up to a maximum of 5 dice. Combat cards and character abilities can modify combat strength and leadership ratings, though more than 5 combat dice will never be rolled. Battles are resolved in a series of combat rounds. There are five steps to resolving a round, and players resolve steps simultaneously. 1. Playing a combat card. At the first step of each combat round, each player will choose whether they want to use a combat card. The attacker declares first, then the defender. Cards are chosen secretly, then revealed simultaneously. Typically, the effects of a card only apply for the current combat round, unless otherwise specified. Then, they are discarded at the end of the combat round. Each combat effect has an initiative number in the bottom left corner. The card with the lowest number is applied first if players each play a combat card. If they have the same initiative, the defender's effect is applied first. Cards may also have requirements, indicated in boldface, that must be met for the card to be played. Some cards may also require a player to forfeit leadership. This means that the selected leader does not count for leadership rating purposes for that combat round. If leadership of a leader has already been cancelled, it cannot forfeit leadership further. Some cards may also allow an additional attack to be made, either after the combat roll or after removal of casualties. Unless specified, these additional attacks use the same base hit number as the combat roll. There are three exceptions to these additional attacks. 1. Leader rerolls are not applicable. 2. Modifiers granted by the opposing player's combat card do not apply, such as this shadow player's desperate battle effect. 3. Casualties are removed immediately, and they are not influenced by effects of the opponent's combat card. Step 2. Roll the dice for the combat roll. During this step, each player will roll a number of combat dice. The number rolled is equal to the combat strength of the respective armies, up to 5. In order to score a hit, the dice must have a result value of 5 or 6. There are combat cards, strongholds, cities, and fortifications that can raise or lower the target number for a hit. Step 3. Roll the dice for the leader reroll. After the combat roll, players each reroll a number of failed hits. 
This depends on the leadership value, as discussed before. The result that is required to score a hit on the leader reroll remains the same as for the combat roll, either a 5 or a 6, unless modified by other effects. Let's go through an example of one of these modifiers. It is a gift allows the player to add 1 to a player's roll dice on the combat roll and leader reroll. In this example, it bumped the leader reroll from a 4 to a 5, giving the free peoples an extra hit. Step 4. Remove casualties. Once the combat roll and leader reroll have been completed, players will remove their losses. The number of hits achieved determines how many casualties an army must take. Each hit scored by an opponent does one of two things. 1. Remove one regular unit. 2. Replace one elite unit with one regular unit. For two hits, a player can remove two regular units or one elite unit, and so on. If replacing an elite unit with a regular one, the regular unit can be taken from previous casualties if there are any. If not, they are taken from available reinforcements if any are available. If this is a free people's player, the elite unit being replaced would be placed among the casualties. If no regular units are available in either casualties or reinforcements, the elite unit is not replaced, but simply eliminated. As shown before, any casualties for the free peoples are placed aside and considered out of the game, so it's important to keep them apart from the reinforcements. For the Shadow player, any casualties may be placed back with the reinforcements as their units never run out. Let's look at Leader and Character Elimination. If all army units involved in a battle are eliminated, all characters and leaders included in that army are removed as well. Free People's leaders are permanently removed from play, while Nazgul may still enter as reinforcements. Eliminated characters and minions are permanently removed from the game, unless a character card specifies otherwise. If a character is in a region without friendly army units, they are not drawn into battle since they are able to exist in a region that contains enemy army units. Step 5. Cease the attack or retreat. At the end of the combat round, the attacking player has the option to cease the attack. If the attacker continues the battle, then the defender has the option to retreat. If neither of these things happens, another combat round occurs. Cease attack. The army ceases its attack, and the surviving units remain where they were at the start of the battle. Retreat. If the defending player retreats, his army immediately retreats to an adjacent free region. If no free region is available, the defender cannot choose to retreat. There are some exceptions. An army can retreat into a stronghold, which will be gone over in the next video. A besieged army cannot retreat. If a retreating army contains a character of level 0, that character is left behind. Finally, we come to the end of the battle. A battle ends when the attacker ceases to fight, the defender retreats, or one or both armies are eliminated. If the defender retreats or is eliminated, the attacker may move a part or the whole of the attacking army into the embattled region. If the embattled region invaded contains an enemy stronghold, and that stronghold contains enemy units, that stronghold is now besieged. And that's it for this video on battles. Thanks for watching this series on how to play War of the Ring.